Um, not really specifically. Maybe we can talk about um Black Friday because Black Friday is coming up. Like, if there's anything we're interested in, or Thanksgiving, cool. or the holidays, what, what our plans are. That could be exciting. Yeah. All right. We'll we'll do that. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, testing, testing. It's me. Well, nice to see you all in the podcast. Um, how are you both doing? Wait, are we recording? Doing good, doing good. You guys? I'm good. Same. Say what? Same. I said. Okay, good. So that, good. I just want you guys discuss usually. Sometimes we do monologues or like say dumb stuff, really. Not much, but sometimes we ask how we're doing and talk about random topics. Or things that change specifically, life terms. Yeah. Sometimes I think that it's very unfortunate how life changes, but sometimes you need to learn how to accept things. I mean, I suppose so. What do you think about that, eh? Well, I think change is inevitable, but whether it's a positive change or a a negative change um, is kind of the hard part to um, accept because most people accept that your situation will change over time because we change over time. But what actually changes is what, um, what's the word? It's like. Uh, life can go from something that's really pretty to something that's really mean very quickly, I guess is what I mean. You know what I mean? Like, you ever experienced that? Yeah, yeah there yeah. can be many examples for, like, when things are fine and dandy in life, especially with family. Kind of how, like, your family was doing well back in the day, right? But then all of a sudden, you're at war with, like, your whole family <laughs> type of deal. And it happens in other families, as far as I'm aware with even friends that tell me that you know it's not like a happy or perfect family even you know hmm what do you think about that eh sorry what what do you think about that of yeah yeah (laughs) like it's i think like i don't know like i feel like well in my particular family it seemed as though um well, the thing about it was it's like it's never like it immediately happens. It's always a slow process, right? It's always a slow process. You know what I mean? Um... Yeah, for sure. Um, I just think that sometimes in the slow process that there could be things that you never know what happens in between like families or people in general, like what makes them change so suddenly. But maybe it could be something that wears them down over time or they don't feel good or content with like their situation yeah if that makes sense. I, I think that is like something like i actually you know i think to myself like in a sense i was the youngest one and so in a sense i was the lucky one i probably was the one who had who was living the best reality out of everyone and everyone else could have been miserable you know who knows but the fact of the matter is it, it does kind of make you think though like are they right though like there's so many people who think that the grass is greener and they try to look for independence and shit and then they end up being miserable years later and sometimes there are cases where you warn people and they they walk into the fire, you know? I don't know. Yeah, it's just one of those sorts of things. I do know what you mean. It kind of reminds me of like how um what you might call it? Um like yeah, well people you you never know that again like how people could feel miserable while you're happy, but they're also sacrificing in a way for you, maybe let it be time, work effort or anything really and that's the thing that sucks the most is that you don't know what people do for you specifically or know what they're feeling inside because even for like let's say a man of a family right has a perfect life going has kids wife house but deep inside he feels miserable or he feels like a specific void or emptiness well, like this is and, like where we where we get into morality. I'm sure this is a topic that A would because A is always very intensive in the political discussion. People who just get into their own selfish fantasies and then you know fuck yeah. up other people's lives, you know. 
I was going to say that people who choose to do or go against the law or rule really are just thinking for themselves. They're just being self-centered and selfish. I, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think about this, eh? Oh, uh, what, about the law? Well, about like you could say rules and stuff like that. And people like if you were to like live in a life and you were like with a family and shit and you were just miserable. Do you think, like, would you try to make the situation better? Or would you just, like, say, fuck this? I mean, I guess I'm framing the question, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, would you, how would you react to that situation? Well, you were talking about, uh, before, you were talking about, um, you know, running away and becoming a stripper or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. In terms of, like, running away and, like, fucking everything up. I think um, it's kind of, I don't know, it just, it doesn't make much sense. The world is structured around, uh, I mean, the world as in people, you know what I mean? Cities are structured structured around nine to five, around... Um, yeah, like rules, right? Like it's the, the ideas that you have. Yeah, rules. there's a... Uh, what's the name? Conve like conventional. you have to be conventional. Yeah, conventional is what I'm saying. If you don't fall within a certain uh, box, I guess you're gonna have a hard time. Yeah, and and some people like they almost try to go against the conventional just for this, just for such and shits and giggles and stuff. Like it, it, I've always, I've always an, I've been annoyed by that. Like that's one of the reasons why I just get so annoyed by living in Vancouver sometimes. Because I think to myself, like sometimes I just want people to be normal. You know, you don't always have to be like trying to go against the grain. You don't always have to be an activist about this and that. Do you all want to talk about something else, Black Friday or something like that? Or Amira, you mentioned that. Sometimes I think like. You cannot change people for who they are. Put sense into someone who's like mental, honestly. I kind of know what you mean by like how some members are stupid. And it's unfortunate how, you know, we're given this life. We're given the set of like family members and we have to come to accept it, really. I mean, you don't have to full on agree with what most of them do, but can kind of work around it or be that special I guess, family or person to break that cycle or else it's going to continue to the next family or generation, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's pretty a, a normal thing, like in a sense where you have just like this idea that like a shit, a shitty family will just continue for the generations because like it, it what one, one generation ends up traumatizing the next. Imagine you're living in a pod that's expensive. All your money is going to that. You're working all the time and then you're dating like a, a toad demon person. You know, that's so demon. <laughs> oh, like seriously, can you imagine that's your life? And then at the same time, like you want to like have married, get married to them. You want them to get married. They want to get married and shit like that. And then they're like, they talk to their girlfriend, and you know, Princess Toad Demon's just like, oh yes, well I'm, you know, I'm I'm actually like omnisexual or a pansexual, and I kind of want to have something a little bit more exciting. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, it's just like. Oh, that's gummy. I don't like maybe I'm maybe I'm making up situations, but there are a lot of cases where you have people who are just completely mind fucked, and this is just totally normal, you know. Like, and it makes you have to be no pansexual or no, uh, no. Poly? I don't want to come off as bigoted or anything. Like, I have no problem with this, but like, there are people who are like, there is actually one person in this particular Discord server. She was dating this dude from Greece. And she became polyamorous, which is really just, in my personal opinion, an easy way of saying a slut, you know? like An excuse. An excuse to just fuck other people. I don't know, what do we think of polyamorous people? I honestly think for people who try to be polyamorous or to explore, it, if they're not confident or happy with themselves or trust their partner even, I think there's that chance that the girl or guy is going to fuck each other over and lose complete trust if they don't trust or believe in themselves or confident nonetheless and it's just another shitty excuse to say like i want to fuck or see what other options i have basically so i honestly don't support polyamorous people and plus you're like you're sticking your wiener in like some other girl or 
the girls like taking <laughs> some wieners. So that's that's even gross. You're more Double like different. prone or more at risk yourself when you don't know what their history looks like and what if that yeah. guy took like some other wiener up his ass you know like you can't <laughs> you you just can't and it's not conventional i guess yeah i mean i don't know it's just one of those things what do you think of it a eh? um i think it could be dangerous if it's not done correctly because of stds and other gross shit if, if it's not done correctly Hmm, so, like, it can it be done correctly? I guess, if you lay out some ground rules. Some ground rules? I mean, that would be interesting. Um, I mean, I feel like... But I feel like, I, I don't know, I just think, in theory, maybe it works. But I just think, in, in practice, it's just so fucking weird. Maybe so I'm, weird. Yeah. yeah, I feel like you, you want to make any additional points? Like, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it seems... I couldn't go with it, you know, polyamory. But the my point... yeah the go ahead uh the emotional aspect I was gonna bring up that I don't think it works out I don't think normal people can just feel emotions for multiple people at once I don't I don't think that's a thing I think a part of it is that people get bored really easily like that's what a lot of people complain about like some people will actually say this is like um incels complaining when someone will say oh you know a lot of people they'll just get bored and stuff like that and they don't want to like settle down and stuff but i feel like it is a very interesting point to make where you do have like i feel like the archetype like I, i'm a huge fan of ariana grande but i think at the same time she does really she really does push a lot of people to be like trashy sluts you know to be quite honest like thank you next and stuff like thank you next inspired a lot of relationships like the idea of just like all right i'm gonna date joe i'm gonna date nick i'm gonna date bill and then we're all gonna i'm gonna see which one is the best and, you know, you're just cycling through people and stuff like that. And there are guys who do this as well. And in my personal opinion, there's sluts themselves. You know, it's just, I don't think it's, I think it's really kind of mindfucked, you know, in a sense. And then you'll see, like, the kids in these families, like, as a byproduct of this. And they're super mindfucked. Like, they're, like, honestly, like, some of the biggest freaks of nature I've ever seen in my personal life, ever. But I don't know. It's just, I don't some know. Some people it could work out. But for me... I'm quite a possessive person and the idea of like, I don't know, it's just maybe for young people that they want to experience, sure, why not? Then they'll learn eventually, like, they want to settle at some point, but it takes too much, like, trust, emotions and stuff but for it to work. But doesn't this all make so much sense in the sense where, like, you know, in the previous podcast and maybe the, some of the very old podcasts that maybe some of you haven't seen yet. But the, there's a we had a discussion about World of Warcraft, like this dude, he plays World of Warcraft and this is his life. And like, I remember, you know, at the time, I think, you know, Sam Krull and EDK and, and Pia and stuff, they said they argued against me and said something to the tune of, oh, you know, World of Warcraft is there's nothing wrong. He's just enjoying his life. Someone who plays lots of World of Warcraft, that's totally cool. That's chill. But I think to myself at the same time, like, don't doesn't one lead into the other? You spoke of in the previous episode, Mira, uh, about how, um, you know, you do have friends and they'll just play League of Legends and they have fun with their clans every single day. That's what they do. And you think to yourself, like, that's what they do every single day. Just imagine. So you, you get addicted to gaming. You only play the same game nine to five, you know, on a regular basis. You only hang out with the same people. And those people are generally, I would imagine, a bunch of dumbasses anyways, because they're just going to spend all their time talking about gaming 24 seven and the same game at that. And then at the same time, this dude who's a gamer 24 freaking seven, who has no social skills, goes up to like Molly Bagali on Tinder, starts dating her. She seems really nice and fun. But then he finds out that she's like a mind fucked weird person who is into like polyamory and shit like that. And, you know, now Molly Bagali is fucking, you know, the, you know, the other chick at the bar and shit and like bragging about it. And you're living in a shoebox apartment. You're driving a smart car. You're playing games every night, crying yourself to sleep every night. And then you go to your, your girlfriend, Molly Bagali, who, you know, Molly has, Bagali. who's been double dipped by like four other guys the day before. Like, can you imagine? Like, this is the new thing. Like, maybe I'm getting conspiratorial here, but I just feel like this is like, this is like the new idea, you know, like this is the concept that like is, oh, this is totally normal. And you wanted that thing like from the past that was like chill. No, that's like you're being you're being a boomer or some shit like that. Like, I feel like 
this is some real mindfuck shit, in my personal opinion. And maybe I've been mindfucked. Maybe I have been brainwashed. But I don't know. Like, I just... Actually, maybe that's the point. Maybe I've been mindfucked. Maybe I just, like, make up these scenarios in my mind and most of this shit isn't actually happening. I think you are making <laughs> the situations a bit too over-exaggerated because I do believe there's some people who know how to maintain their gaming life and also have a social life outside of it. So those are the good people I think it's good to surround yourself with or that people you know have a better social life rather than like online because sometimes you kind of wonder like what do people do all day especially on discord you know yeah but and... with discord we try to have discussions and stuff like i would say relative to well i mean in this server we've had some pretty weird discussions recently but like you know we'll have the point of the discussion is that you have you you can talk about anything you can talk about traveling last night i was talking about oh i want to one day i want to go to italy and just travel and see what it looks like you know, don't you want friends where you can travel, you know, like in a mirror? Don't you want of friends course. where you could travel around, you know, the area and, and go to like go around the East Coast and stuff and see things? Or do you want friends where like they talk about League of Legends 24 7 or you talk about a different topic no. and they, they're like, mm, oh, I don't want to talk about that. Exactly. And then they go back to no. Game. Like that, this is like the idea, right? Like I, I'd much rather have something sophisticated, right? The concept of sophistication, like a, a sense of openness. Like you want to have friends and you're traveling and all that sort of stuff and you're having fun. Like it's like Victorious, you know, that show Victorious with Ariana Grande and stuff. And, and like you're, you're having fun and you're partying and you're doing this and that. But no, it's like that's relegated to like the popular people and everyone else. You have to have a bunch of like leftover losers who will only talk about the same bullshit. I don't know. No, I agree. Like, especially when I meet people, I would want that they have more openness to try new things or to meet. And I remember meeting a girl on Discord from the Himmer server, IRL specifically, and mm -hmm. she kind of wanted to spend most of her time gaming while I was over there. So I kind of felt like she was a bad host. And yeah, to me, I wanted to do more and offer, pay for most things, you know, and there was some of those things that we explored and had fun but there was more to just gaming well i felt like you, you know you could do more and i also think it's good to find people that are open to meeting or going out because it's just not gaming like forever or you know there's so many things to enjoy out there so i'm also trying to seek opportunities like that even now if i must say yeah it's I don't know. It's just one of those things where you just. That's why you need to make some local friends. Sometimes it's mm. not good to make our, I mean, online friends if they're I not disagree. able to. I you disagree? I completely disagree because I've, I, I remember I previously before I started the Judla or whatever you want to call it. I had this other server and I, I tried to turn it into like a business network. And so people I would know from high school, I'd add them to my server. People who I met from university, I would add them to the server. And the idea was that a lot of the people who were added, I assumed, like, I assumed that they would be badasses because this, this was full of business students. I thought it would be like the Wolf of Wall Street and we talk about whatever and we talk about dating and fun and, and our plans and trips and stuff like that and, and, and get into intense philosophy and debates and shit. But no, they were a bunch of dumbasses. There was one person in particular from my high school who was studying finance and I assumed he would be like a hardcore, you know, investment motherfucker. But he joins the server. And he lectures us about this and that and, and all of these like social causes that nobody gives a fuck about. And I remember thinking to myself, then I went on his Facebook and I looked and I looked at the girl he, he took to prom and she was one of the ugliest girls I'd ever saw, saw. And I thought to myself, this is the person I added to my server. Like this person, I, I know it seems like so shallow that I always focus on like this person is, uh, why is he dating someone so ugly? But my point is like, you can always tell whether someone is an idiot by their taste, you know? If they have nice taste in music, in my personal opinion, I think they're like a very intense, they're like a cool, chill person you want to hang out with. Like they like catchy music that sounds good. They've got a good vibe, you know? If they like driving around in a nice car, they like beautiful places, they're a chill person who you want to hang out with because they get it. But if they're a dumbass who like goes to like some shithole like Detroit and is like, oh, this is a great place, or they're dating, you know, 
Mr. Fula Ula, Mrs. Fula Ula, and she's a fucking land whale person. Well, I would be pretty pissed off. I'd be like, what, what the fuck is this? Like, this is not a way to engage with life. You're, you're a loser. You're, you're, you're not even, and this person is a financier and you're thinking to yourself, he's like an, he's supposed to be someone who's like hardcore, who's an investor, who, who wants more and stuff. But then he's blowing all of his cash dating freaking disgusting carpet demons, you know? I'm sorry. I mean, I don't want to like say like, no, you can't make online friends because I've, I believe that you can make good friends from online and it can lead to more and like long lasting friendship, which I've noticed from compared to like some um, IRL. But I just say it's best to kind of have like a mix of both online and IRL. Um, it's unfortunate you encountered some bad people IRL, but I still think there's that specific group or people at least that are decent and not like no i don't think any of them are like i i've, I've had most friends who i make in real life maybe it's just a vancouver thing but most friends I make maybe in it's real a life vancouver thing are just a complete like a set of complete pussies there's one case of a dude who had joined my server previously who i knew personally and he was a computer dude and we talked to him and he would be like oh well the idea is that if you like linux the, the idea with linux is you could do so many things it's so efficient actually and like he was like one of these people who was like so official and everything had to be perfect and stuff and so we talked to him and we'd say something to i'd say something to the tune of like oh i i just installed a windows program what do you think of it? And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. You need to use this software. It's much more efficient. This is just the way it's supposed to be done. And he was like so official and shit. Like whenever the server conversation got like too raunchy, he would always say, no, no, no. We need to make the topic more efficient. Like he was one of those people who was like just a terminally person, like a terminally online person who was obsessed with computers and shit and gaming and, and all that sort of stuff. And, and world probably Warhammer and stuff like that. He seemed like the type of person. And so anyways, case in point, then one day a friend of mine who joins this server, you know, who I'd known personally, said something to the tune of, yo, you know this dude? Um, there was actually a very famous server meeting, a voice chat meeting a couple, like a year ago, where all of us were in the voice chat meeting and he revealed to this. He said, you know that dude? And I was like, yeah, I found him in a kink server. And I was like, wait, what? And he said that he found him, he read a post and in the post he was looking for a mummy and a daddy. And how he wanted to be taken care of and be, you know, be if needed, he needed to be punished and had like someone dominate him and shit like that. And I thought to myself, this is so mindfucked because this person, he would come to me and he'd be like, oh, no, that's not efficient. Let's not talk about that topic. It's not appropriate. And then secretly behind the scenes, he's on another kink server, you know, being, you know, dressed up like a dog and cat and chased around the room all naked or shit. Like, it's like this person is fucking crazy. And then... To add insult to injury, under the post where he was looking for a mummy and daddy on this other Discord server wanting to be whipped and had leather gear and shit on, he had a, po a photo underneath. And you know what he looked like in that photo? Like what? Like Peter fucking Griffin. <laughs> he looked like Peter Griffin in the photo. Can you imagine? I don't know. It's just... Oh, like you, he, he was a local, right? Or He, he looked like Peter Griffin. Oh. And, and so we just he, he sent me the photo I couldn't stop laughing I just thought to myself this is the sort of person you meet in real life like he's you know he, these are the people who are nearby easy to meet at least online you can kind of stratify and pick and choose sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't but you're more likely to meet you have a, a bigger pool of people to kind of pick from and more interesting people as well if you really stratify it like there's been much more interesting people I've met on this server than in the other server which was like the other server just had people who I knew personally right and so anyways yeah it's just one of those things where I feel like maybe this is just a specific example you know but it just he was a he was a freak um it's quite a shock I think you can meet freaks IRL and even online have you ever met so someone who asked you to be their mummy <laughs> no would you be his mummy but no a would you be his mummy no. What if but what if he like dressed up like Peter Griffin and he showed up at your house and he was just like, Ooh, could you be my mummy? And he said like we could watch no. my little pony together and shit and have a good time. I called the police, put a restraining order on that idiot. What if he pulled out a gun and said, Get in the car, bitch? Fucking <laughs> fucking You would you get in the car? No. Oh, okay. 
shots fired, then you wouldn't. So he's like, you would rather die than even, you know, spend time with someone like that. That's what my point is. You know, it sounds, it makes sense, doesn't it? That was my point. But yeah. That that gun could be like a toy gun for all we know, I don't honestly. Know. Some people like this, I would I would freaking stay the fuck away from because these are the types of people where you're their mommy or daddy and then like, you know, 10 minutes later, they pull out a shotgun and they start role playing as something else. Um, I don't know. Anyways, I mean, this is all just to, there are all of, a lot of other things to discuss as well. Um, I mean, actually, I've kind of driven the topics right now. Does any, do any of you want to talk about anything in particular? Um, not sure. Would A have any? Maybe we can go off with her to see if there's anything she wants to talk about. Hmm. Well, last time, last time we talked about dreams, right? And we had a very interesting, and you, you talked about life and stuff like that and dreams. You had dreams about your father in a park, which was like eerie, right? Because you're just like thinking to yourself of what does this mean and stuff like that. Um, and and then I guess today, in a sense, today was a bit of a continuation because we talked about um, kind of like life and 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 kind of this idea where you have life in a sense where you you assume that it's going to continue in a certain way, and it doesn't. You know, like you'll have, you know, one of the things that I loved so much about this this girl this documentary, the Vatican Girl, was this dude. He just wants to find his sister. You know, he loves his sister. There's one point in time when he's interviewing this other guy, and this other guy is saying these horrible things about his sister. And he says something to the tune of, don't say that about her. And I just thought to myself, oh my God, that's so innocent. Like he's still thinking about his sister like she's 15, you know, because that's when she went missing. And it's this idea that like you have this sense of this, this, um, this cohesion, right? It's so important to have that cohesion, right? Because again, like there's, you can't really create that. You look, at, we, we talked about this afterwards where you, you look for relationships and stuff and you do have a lot of mind fucked people in relationships. They don't necessarily meet on the same page. And even when they aren't mind fucked, things, situations change, people will get bored and shit like that. And so the only people who really will stick around in a sense is family. And, and it's important to have that. So I guess that was a following topic. Um, hmm. We could talk about political topics. There was someone in the HIMR server who was requesting political topics for us to talk about. I mean, we could talk about the war in Ukraine. I mean, it looks like um, it's a controversial topic, I guess, depending on one's opinion. But, um, you know, it is it is interesting how, again, like you just have people who are living their lives and then all of a sudden, I, I actually think they actually even haven't even spoken of, of like the effects on civilians. But like you'll have cases where you'll have a girl and she's just walking in her neighborhood and her her foot is blown off because she like hits a landmine or something like that or a missile hits her or something like that. The the case of the woman who found her her son in a well and she knew this because she could see his sneakers sticking out of the well and she just bawled and cried and stuff like that. Like the the, the horrors cannot be uh, really summed up in just a couple of videos. There's so many videos that are posted everywhere on mostly on places in places like 4chan and stuff like that what do you think of i mean particularly i'll ask a because you're in you're in that kind of area eastern europe to some extent the balkans um what do you think of the war i mean i'm, I'm not very educated on politics and war and stuff i don't know how what would you do in qualifying them like what would you do if like like what would you do if like they moved on from ukraine and they went to like romania and they started invading. What would your reaction be? I don't. I don't know. Pack my things and go somewhere else far to lovely. protect myself. I guess. <laughs> yeah. You, you wouldn't stay and fight for your country, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> no. How can you when well, it's the Russians? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are well, they like? And at that point, if they're attacking you, like they're gonna take down your house everything and like kill people can you really like stay and fight i mean you can but it's, it's gonna be high risk high risk so, that you die so you let the male relatives in your family fight you wouldn't fight with why why not spanish people don't believe in guns at least for my folks so and at least the people around here don't believe in guns so it's pretty hard to think of war or to fight Well. 
I mean, I think the most famous question that was asked in the first episode of the podcast was like, <laughs> what was it? I think it was a raging bull. He asked everyone, he said, would you fight and die for your country? And I remember like silence, like no one, <laughs> everyone said no. Um, that same reaction, especially for people, if you ask them like, oh, do you love America, your country? And the answer is no, no one does. Well, like, because what happened to it? Like, I feel like before in previous, like, generations, you had something worth fighting for. But in a sense, it's like, what are you fighting for anyways? Like, it's so corrupt anyways. And then in addition to that, you have this cost of living crisis um, where, you know, the, the cost of living is just so ridiculous. And in my personal opinion, I think it's so obvious where a lot of these costs are coming from. You have, like, again, you'll have, like, the city hall or something, these local governments, and you'll have, like, these weird people in scarves and shit. They'll be like, oh, yes, but what about the system? Yes, I know that housing prices have increased four times and people are living in the streets and renting out closets and stairways to live on. But can we talk about the new sustainability initiative? And you're just like, what the fuck? Like, they want to tax, like, cars that are driving in certain sections of the city and stuff. Like, they're doing this in London as well. So, like, in a sense, you question to yourself, like, is it even worth fighting for, you know? It seems like you come to the question of, like, um, I guess the word would be... Um, you have a disloyalty because like in a sense you feel like you're not really getting anything out of it anyways just in, in my personal opinion but yeah um i don't know like these are just all kind of it's one second okay so I'm just, i just paused the, the podcast in terms of recording i think we only have like um when did we start actually i'll just look at the recording how long it was one refresh Hello everyone. Okay, so the, the okay. Okay, so the last recording was forty minutes. So we really, I mean, we can go for fifteen more minutes if possible. Um, anyways, um, I'll cut out this particular part. But in terms of topics, do you have an idea of topics to talk about? Anything you want to talk about particularly? We had some deep topics to talk about previously. Um, just talk about now, like for the end of the year. Do you guys have any goals? any goals for next year that you guys want to do or travel anywhere specifically? I think those would be nice topics to um, talk about. Sure. So. Black Friday too. How's work? How's everything going? You really wanted to talk about Black Friday. What are you doing on Black Friday? What are you going to buy on Black Friday? Um, There's not really much in specific, really, because I already got most things, but there's this one specific, like, um, hair styling um, brush that's quite expensive so I'm kind of hoping that it lowers down so I can look into that and try to like make curls with my hair if yes. that makes sense yeah you should get like it's a Dyson air wrap I think that's the name of the um, hair brush Dyson but I also work brush. on I also work on Black Friday I think so I'm kind of nervous as well well usually it's one of those things where like if you have a job and it's like really busy um, it's less scary than if it's like kind of busy because like you have so many people that like you get lost in the crowd and you're just one of the many employees just doing a lot of shit, you know? It's like the pressure yeah. is, is less on you and it's on everyone. And the fun is like you're just kind of enjoying the chaos, right? But um, yes, yeah, I mean, I mean, in a sense, it makes you think about Christmas. Like, are you, A, are you going to do like, do you have any Christmas plans and stuff? I imagine Black Friday isn't a thing in Romania. It is, it is, but no, I, I don't have any plans because, because no, I don't have any <laughs> Because I feel like you're going to say something really deep. No, 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 nothing. I'm sorry. Because there's been a massive war that happened in my family and we had a huge argument. No, that would be interesting. But um, yeah, I mean, for me, the Christmas, I mean, actually mentioning that point, I mean, in terms of Christmas, I don't think this Christmas, I, I actually would prefer to just spend Christmas watching movies on Netflix. It sounds sad to say it like that, but I actually, there was one point in time when I did do that because like during COVID, you know, and everyone wasn't really gathering together. And so it was actually one of the best Christmases I ever had because I just bought chocolates, ordered some Uber, some nice food and just enjoyed myself. It was actually a really good time. You know, in a sense, I, I wish I was more independent, you know? I want to... There's this field studies trip that goes to Italy for my school, and I kind of just want to go to Italy and travel Europe. But I, what I want to do is I want to do the, the field st studies trip where I go, like, for three weeks and enjoy it. 
And then I want to like go on a detour and like travel through Europe through train. Is that possible, you know, to do that completely? Is it possible to travel Europe by train? Depends where. Uh, in, in my country, at least, you could, but it would be kind of inconvenient because the system is trash. It's like Outside, I'm not really an expert. I don't know. Probably, yeah. In the West, especially. Have you ever been like outside of Romania? Nope, never. Really? I'm broke. Never? Like you, your family never like went to like France or something like that? It's so close. No, no. The closest I've ever been to going to another country was um in was like close to the border of of Hungary. But other than that, no. Really? That's so sad. So you haven't really had the chance to travel, have you? Do you want to travel? Of course. Who doesn't? No, but where do you want to go? Like within... Uh, somewhere where I can learn a lot about history. I don't know where that would be, but that's it. Well, it depends what kind of history, I suppose. Like, you do have France, which has a lot of artistic history. And then you have England that has a lot of war and business history um and then you have amsterdam which is just like um I, I, what's it yeah amsterdam so i guess that would be in the netherlands and then that place it has a lot of business history and history of like one of the things interesting about europe is like with when i think of terms in terms of time i think of it from like an american perspective where like the the 20th century is the beginning of all time right like nothing happened before that that was worth even noting but I mean, in Europe, like you'll have like places in Amsterdam where like this is a tunnel where all of these particular poets met or something like that. I remember specifically a story that someone told me in this class where you would have these groups of people that would meet in tunnels and do like all of these like unmentionable things and stuff in Amsterdam and stuff. And so like in a sense, it's like um, that's what's kind of fun about traveling Europe. I kind of I like the idea of just like going to small towns and just exploring that. There's this feeling you know, in, in, in when I think about it, like with my sister and my family and stuff, one thing that I think my sister got that I never got was my sister really was able to develop a lot of independence early on. And I think as a byproduct of that, that's probably why she separated faster from the family because she just, she didn't, she found something better than that. You know, she could go to these small towns and she owns the small town. She's just going from place to place to place. She's just relaxing, enjoying life. The costs aren't that expensive and she feels a sense of community. And so she has no reason to come back here in a sense. And I, I kind of been looking for that feeling myself, you know, I feel like I feel so wojack recently, just so much work and so much stress and stuff. And just for what? Like, what's the point of this? Like, it would be nice to be able to go travel places and, and, and enjoy myself. And then at the same time, just live my like my life is a, a storybook, an adventure and stuff. Like, I feel like that's not the case right now. You know? Like, yeah, I would say honestly, like every country and every place has its own specific history. So I would say go with a country that um, you like or have interest in at least and you want to learn more and go from there. Italy, I think. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, Italy would be close. But then there's also I mean, there's also Eastern Europe as well, which. With in my mind, like Eastern Europe is a wild card, of course, because like it's different from Western Europe. There's a lot less, um, like a lot less, like I guess Westernized things there, and so less foreigners and stuff like that. Um, but it would be interesting just to kind of like I feel like the idea, in my personal opinion, is that you travel Western Europe, and then once you really kind of like traveled the bejeebus out of Western Europe, if that's even possible, go to Eastern Europe and then go into the more interesting areas as well. Like there's a lot, there's a lot of history in Eastern Europe the Eastern Bloc and stuff. But um, I don't know. I feel like I'm just dreaming right now, fantasies and stuff. I haven't done any of this myself. Like I'm stuck, you know, every two years I go to the Philippines. I enjoy it to an extent, but at a certain point I'm beginning to kind of feel the toll of it, you know? You go so many like times. Like tired. Yeah, after tired. After a lot of times. And also, like, in a sense, like, in a, I get this feeling, like, 
like the costs of it is just you know going to europe would be expensive and stuff but it's expensive because like i'll go there and like you'll have cousins and stuff and you'll buy things for the cousins but it's not like you just buy it's like you spend thousands of freaking dollars and stuff and then you do it again after two years and it's just like it's not like it's expected but it's almost like it's expected you know what i mean because once you do it once you kind of want to always keep doing it and i think to myself it's like it's it's so like unselfish in a sense that like Sometimes you want to be selfish. Sometimes you want things to be all about yourself sometimes. And I feel like that's never the case, you know? I'm always working, doing this and that. And it would be nice to just have a vacation where I just go somewhere and I'm treating myself, you know? And I'm going to this place, I'm going to a spa, I'm going to go to this place and I have the freedom to do this. I feel so constricted, you know? And it's... it's Always buying them the Gucci bag. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's the idea. Like, you would buy the branded stuff there and then you would buy the fake stuff there and then bring them back here and like enjoy it and then you know the fake stuff you would buy there like the pirated whatever you want to call it stuff would just break within two weeks anyways but... i feel like since you're aware of this and that you went so many times i think at least for this year or um for next year you can plan something else and not just go with just visiting and always giving gifts because even i understand how annoying that could be because for my family they give to members yet we're not like specifically close to them so i'm like um it's okay once but we have to do this like every year you know like they don't like really care or like give back at least so it just really like irks me for people to be like that you know and some of these people are ungrateful as fuck you know like there's one time exactly i was in we were sitting in this room and it was like a nice room it's like a palace i don't know if you've seen the house in the philippines it's like a palace built like a palace and you had this this chick who was like a second cousin or something from a few houses down and she was just like oh like she wanted to see she was like can i see do you have a girlfriend can i have do you have this can i have oh wow thanks i could give her some money and she'd be like thank you and i'm like who the fuck are, like at a certain point i wanted to just tell her to get the fuck out because she was just such a like annoying like full of herself person just like oh i want this like she's like it's like I, she wants me to prove all of these fucking points there like who the fuck are you you live in some like you know a complete piece of shit and you're going to me you know asking all of these things I need to compose myself, but my point is, like, um... Do they expect things from you when you visit there? Not all of them, but there are some people who I would say, like... I I am also noticing that, like, before I would be really generous and people would be like, wow, and this time I'm, like, really generous and it's like, okay, thank you. Like, some people are just like, they. it's like, okay, thank you. And I think to myself, like, hmm, like, I kind of almost want to take it back, like, take back the money. (laughs) (laughs) Like just like see the reactions they oh never mind i'm just like take the money and walk off but um yeah like it's just one of those things where i just feel so i don't know i feel like recently in life i feel very inadequate you know i feel very right, inadequate when you're doing a lot and always visiting them and stuff i think it's time to realize that oh you know i visited them ev- almost every year now it's time to change go to europe marry some russian girl if possible or you think that's you know. my plan um yeah it could be your plan i mean do something new visit somewhere else you know she could have i should go to florida have a trip and that could be kind of fun wouldn't it <laughs> we can go to miami beach and the strip clubs mm. yeah you and me right yeah yeah i mean like i feel like it would be interesting to travel and go to places i just feel so constricted i feel i look at like everything and i I think to myself maybe i'm the one who fucked up i always like bitch at my about my brother and sister they're the ones who are like super independent my brother is the one who's like traveling to these places he lives like a a couch surfer i see his snapchat stories and he's like going from this place to that place living on his friend's couch or doing this and that going to all of these parties in the city i think to myself like the whole world is his playground and for me i feel like i'm being played on by the world myself you know, it's it's just, I don't know. I feel like next episode, I kind of want to get into that topic, kind of just like the idea of adventure and stuff like that. Um, anyways, sure. did anyone, any of you wanted to talk about one last topic or anything? I think I'm good. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, no, I got nothing. Sorry. No, it's all good. I just wanted to see how everyone is doing. I mean, when, I mean, actually, I'll just ask one last question. What do you all want to, like, what do you think I should do with the server? The server, I'm going to be quite honest, ever since Pia um, departed, um, 
has been very quiet, or it's been very strange, I would say. The, the vibe of the server is certainly different from what it was previously. And what do you think I should do? What, like, what do you think the server would be in its best point? You know, my vision is you have people in the Minecraft server. We have regular voice chat meetings every day or something like that, which anyone can join at any time. And it's like a support network of people who are just talking about life and doing things and traveling and posting pictures and blogging and stuff. Um, what do you see? Like, what do you think I should do with the server? Just ideas? What kinds of people do you think should join? I feel like there are a lot of like posts from like really in like a, I don't know like in hindsight I have to say there are a lot of incel type posts that I see that I feel like kind of inhibit that idea. So my opinion on the server and I expressed to you before like how you can't just invite just anyone or random people like lava or incels because. If you do, I don't think any of them are going to take the server seriously. And it's not going to give that vibe where you can like share things or um, post on blog life or talk about discussions if all they want to talk about are just stupidity, really. Yeah. So I'm noticing this I think myself. maybe to eliminate or have a serious talk with them to pick up or change that. But if not, then that's on you and especially you have to keep in mind that people may be busy like i remember rocker used to get on vc a lot but now he's not on as often because maybe he's busy with work or I think other events so i think he's stressed. stressed too yeah so i think maybe it's good to make like a schedule as well because um maybe make events like how most servers are nowadays where they make events to watch something together play a game or VC, I think that would be very good so that we could all like have time to spend time together out of the week and just hang out. Yeah, I think that would be interesting. I think we should do some events and stuff like that because I think like there's a lot of potential there. Um, yeah, I mean, th I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do events. Um, I want to do like a lot of I, for one. Yeah, you do make a point about like some of the incel sorts of discussions. Like, there's one person in particular, and I think that person knows who he is, where he'll constantly talk about, like, these anti-Semitic things. And at first, you're like, ha-ha, like, you're very edgy, whatever. But at a certain point, it just gets very draining. Like, can you imagine you join this new server and you have every single freaking post it's all, like, bitching about the Jews and stuff, stuff like that? Can you imagine? Like, at a certain point, I just told him to stop because I'm just thinking to myself, like, can you imagine... Can you, well, one, imagine if you're like Jewish and you go into the server and you have this crazy motherfucker constantly bitching about your people. Like, I'd be and eventually myself. they would get offended by their comments too, and then no it shit. doesn't feel as welcoming. And then people will leave for those incels being stupid, really. Yeah. And and then who is it for, anyways? Like, they're just shit posting at that point, you know, there's no interesting discussion happening, just shit posting. You know, what's the point of that? You don't get anything, just from them being that. edgy. Being ed and being edgy to who? Like, is he impressing the girls? Are you impressed, eh? No. Are you impressed, Mira? Not at all. <laughs> Do you want to go to this person's party and have him vibe and go crazy? Like, I'm, I, I wouldn't. Like, I feel like it's just, I don't know. One needs to compose themselves, in my personal opinion. I think it's important to compose. Yeah. What time is it right now in Romania, eh? Well, it's 3.59. A.M.? <clears throat> Oh, yeah, in the morning. Oh, my God. No wonder you're quiet. <laughs> no, I just got a little shy for some reason. I don't know why. It's Sorry. Okay. What do you think of, like, um, the HIMR server? Let me look at the chats that have been going on. One of the reasons why I've been talking about how the server has been getting its ass kicked is because it's getting its ass kicked. Look at the chats in HIMR and look at the chats in this server recently. P1. I haven't been paying attention to the him or chat, but I just assume it's like the same old like conversation. Uh, I mean, some of it is trying. I try to make the conversation different myself, but again, it always goes back to the same thing. Oh my god! Rapist and then you spurge about Pia Aey Eris. Maybe Aey. I'm not spurging about Pia. I'm being honest about Pia. Is what I'm doing. People are just talking about random stuff that at this point, it's like, I don't know what's going on. And Daniel is just there in Thailand, not paying attention to us and probably getting scammed little by little. 
Yeah, he's taking a page out of Luffy's book, isn't he? <laughs> mm. I'm gonna open up this. I'm gonna open up the podcast chat in case anyone wants to join. In case like Luffy joins, It'd be kind of interesting. Um, let me do this. Let me do. What am I doing? Edit, edit channel participants. There are 99 people can join. All right, and so I'll just say to everyone. I hope to fuck the incel person doesn't join. Everyone, if he does, I'll just kick him and pretend that like the call dropped or something. <laughs> um, everyone, we are the podcast is over. Over regular VC in podcast channel. Yeah, there's just been so many things that have happened in the server. I really did miss the old vibe in the initial server. Where it used to be Para, and we would just, he worked at this gas station in Chicago, um, still does, he manages it now, that's why he's so busy, but he used to be on the Discord every single day, and we'd talk and have these voice chats every single day, and we'd play Minecraft every single day, and so we'd just talk about our lives, we'd talk about our girlfriends, we'd, you know, talk about things that we were planning and stuff like that, and it was just a very nice vibe, it was so comfortable, it was really, I felt like I had lost all of my friends previous to that, and it felt like, it felt like I had my friends again, you know? Except better friends, you know. Everyone loved Para. And then he left. And now he's back, but, you know, it's different. Yeah. I don't know. Everyone's doing their old thing, and I've just been talking to more IRL people and friends that I have. Yeah. So I've been distracting myself. Mm hmm. You seem to be doing better, you know, a lot more happy and everything now, which is good. Um, a little bit, yeah. And like doing things to like have a routine and help distract and like I'm kinda looking into like seeing when I can have the time to watch like a drama or maybe like how you said to play a game and distract. Right? Yes. And take it things day by day. Um well, that's what I meant in 2015. I was so depressed. I had lost everything. My you know, father had kicked me out. I had lost all my friends. I was humiliated by my friends, that prom story and shit. And so I was really just kind of embarrassed and sad and stuff. And so I just spent all my time playing The Sims. And I made the world that I wanted to live in in The Sims. I filled it with like the pop songs that I used to listen to, which was like acceptable in 2015 because that was just new music. Um, I played the Carly Rae Jepsen album. Actually, I'll post the song that I can consistently kept playing. It was called Carly Rae Jepsen Boy Problems. Boy Problems. Boy Problems. Mm -hmm -hmm. And I just kept playing that album over and over and over again, playing The Sims. And my Sims were so, were so beautiful. Hey, how are you doing? My Sims were so beautiful. I was just obsessed with the beauty of it all. And it was just such a relaxing thing to live in my gaming world. I, I, I wish I never escaped that. The idea was that if I had continued to live in the world where I was just playing games all the time and, and working and stuff, I would probably be, be better off than, than I am currently because I wouldn't have gotten in, involved in the, the dumb investments that ended up making me lose a lot of money that I had. Um, I would have been able to invest normally, you know, and, and just play games and, and relax in my own world, you know. Would have been nice. Yeah. I also lately been doing good as well. Well... I think cheese to I me, care. you know, my situation now with my ex, but basically, like, he's trying to act nice after, like, all the mean, messed up things he, like, said to me. So, like, I'm not, like, letting myself be phased by his words because for all we know is that he wants to, like, hurt me or, like, think that he has control of me. And to love and, like, respect myself, I don't think I should, you know, be friends with him. So... After I get my package of my leftover stuff over there, I'm just going to like cut ties and say I don't think we should stay in touch and that this was overall unhealthy and toxic for me. So I've been kind of trying to reinforce that idea and then slowly like I've been trying to take care of myself. And earlier today, um, I kind of felt annoyed because I was trying to get rid of this implant I have. And then what I just remember. It's like a birth control. Because mm. I have a irregular period, but 
they convinced me that I could try like birth control pills while with this implant to regulate and see if things get better and like a bit of this hormonal acne. So I hope so. But the idea is that like it just kind of sucks um, like doing these things alone because the reason I got this implant was like for my ex and stuff. And yeah. it made me feel so bad or like angry or like even more sad that, you know, I'm just thinking like, you I wanted to take it, this right? off. Yeah, you're like, yeah. I, I made a modification to my body. So, you know, you could be with him and stuff like that. And then he, well, I mean, like, it's like what I said previously with the dude, I mean, with the girl at which he was hanging out with, like, I feel like the girl just turned out to be a thought. Like, he's thinking to himself, oh, this is going to be a new thing. And like, you know, this is the new girl. She's more exciting. And then, yeah, of like, course... they literally stopped playing. And then I think, again, they played like a few, like, maybe two games, but that's it. But I'm not going to let him, like, think that I'm an option because I'm not. And he fucked it up. He fumbled the bag, basically. So I kind of been making jokes with my friends, my girlfriend and stuff that, you know, like he's just another guy. And there's other guys that I could meet, make sugar daddies. I could go on interesting, cute dates with you. I can meet Chase to meet you, a anyone. You and I could find we can have people. Some coffee as friends, right? <laughs> Yeah, and I could, like, meet people who appreciate me and not, like, this dipshit who, like, mistreated me. So I've been in, like, this dilemma where it's, like, you know, like, how, like, they make you think you don't deserve much or, like, you know, like, well, you feel you, belittled. Because you lived with him, right? And so he got very used to, to you living there. He's just like, oh, you know, that's just Mira, you know, whatever, you know, like, he, he, he begins, he stops seeing you as his girlfriend and just sees you as some girl, you know? And that's the, the major mistake a lot of guys make, right? And then after the fact, he realizes, oh, shit, I fucked up. This new girl is a thought. You know, this this new girl as well, you know, with a lot of these sorts of girls, they like it when they're with a guy who has a girlfriend because it turns them on. You know, it's that idea that they're doing something forbidden, right? And that's a messed up thing of like that girl of like she's a homewrecker, you know, me. she's a homework. There's some things he kind of said that I cannot disclose, but. He's just lack of respect. And it makes me wonder, like, why do you want to be friends with me if you call me like an abuser? So, like, your narrative does not add up or make sense well, to like me what, or to anyone. It's like what you said and hence previously. Why I think he just wants to think like I'm an option or like I'm free to him, which I'm not. So yeah. he could fuck off. So in that sense, I am improving, I think. And I'm more happy now to be free. Oh, that's good. That's always good to hear. Yeah, I, and now you can be my daddy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I thought that's, I was that's, your daddy. Baby, <laughs> baby steps. Baby. No, I think she literally sees me as a father figure. We got to work on that. But oh baby my. steps. <laughs> that's kind of hot. I made a joke on his friend server that he invited me. So I just, out of nowhere, I'm like, I'm going to call you my my papa. Yeah, and it just makes You're me look happy. like it, it just embarrasses me. <laughs> It embarrasses me in front of my friends, but that's fine. As, as long as she's healing. Um, <laughs> but Canada seems nice. I kind of want to. I've wanted to visit Canada before, and I might visit New York later this year. If you ever visit, depending Canada, on my friend. If you ever visit Canada, we can do a thing where I travel and you travel, as when we both go to Ottawa or something. Because the idea is, and this is like more of a, a winter plan, but if you go to Ottawa, there's this massive skating rink downtown. And it's like one of the biggest in the world. And it's just like, it goes through like this, it's like a river or something. And you just keep going. I've been thinking of building it in the Minecraft server myself. And it's like this idea where you can just keep skating and it's so beautiful. And there's these cafes and stuff. It would be so nice. And then once you go somewhere like Ottawa, because it's on the East Coast, you can take the train along the East Coast. So you can go to Toronto, Montreal, and it's just... There's so many plans that can happen. It could be really exciting, actually. Um, yeah, we could have a real a good time as friends, you know, as friends, right? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know about friends. You tell me some disturbing stuff that I don't think friends would do, like betraying my parents' trust. Oh please, that's what friends do. That's right? a bad influence. A little bit of DL bad influence. Stuff, you know? Okay, we, we okay we can we can start we can small. We can go. Let's, okay, uh, okay, Amira, what's what's in Florida? Is it Disney World or Disneyland? No, Disney World is like north, so four hours away. But I okay, would but say we, could... we can go to Miami Beach. We can go to Wynwood. We can go to Brickell, which is where it's all, you know, rich area, kind of. Um, 
Well, that's good. I've, I've actually been wanting to travel. I went to Boston last year, and that was fun. But I've been, I didn't travel this year because I've been busy. Actually, no, it was this year I went to Boston. But I'm accruing some paid time off so I can go on vacation again. And I yeah, so see what happens. I don't know. No promises. Sounds pretty chill. Sure. There's a lot down here, but I would say it's more like party life. And maybe there is some nice place that you can like do activities and stuff. But if you're into like nature, like hiking wise or all that stuff, there's no mountains here. It's just flat land and beaches. But who actually does that? Like there's a lot of people in Vancouver who talk about hiking and they're just a bunch of like hippie people who you don't want to hang out with anyways. Like you don't want to go on a hike with these people. These are the people you go on a hike with and they pull out a gun midway through the hike and, you know, take advantage of you or some shit. Um, like, it's just, I don't know, in my personal opinion. Imagine I- going hiking and, I don't know, some weird people. You should go hiking Like, having Lava. sex outside. No. He would be good to you. No, that's disgusting. We we literally had a woman go missing last year in America. I forgot her name, unfortunately, but Gabby we don't need another one of those. Incidents. Yeah, we don't need another one of those incidents. Yeah, well, we you don't. Know. Do you think Lover would really like make you go missing? I feel like he would just like hit you or something. <laughs> he he just like start an argument midway through the hike and just like slap you across the face and then spend the rest of the hike explaining why he did it. <laughs> like he just seems like that. He seems more like he would be in that category, you know. He'd be like, "I didn't want to do this, but you made me the way you treat me." I don't know, he wants to go back in the server, but then he sent me a sex tape of him fucking a fat chick, and I was just like, dude, you know? I don't know. It's just... That could be you next, Jupe. If him fucking... Wait, him, wait, wait. him fucking him or him fucking a fat chick? Which one? <laughs> oh my god. Both. I, mean, I ship Jupe and Lava. I ship them both. I actually like Lava. I know everyone hates him, but I think he's interesting because he just says whatever the hell he, he wants, you know? But at the same time, he is fucking crazy at the same end, you know? It's just, he doesn't... He's just, hmm? he's just kind of like perpetu- perpetually sleazy. Like, there's yeah. no really... There's there's no real good side about it. <laughs> I kind of like that. I'm kind of sleazy myself. I like kind of the idea that he's he just says whatever he wants and he does whatever he wants. But at the same time, like, there's a limit. Like, he just, like... We have we wake up one morning. I wake up one morning and I look at the Discord server and I see him. He's like, Mira, go fuck yourself. You're useless. I hate you. Burn in hell. Kill yourself. Whatever. And I was like, what the fuck? Like he this didn't. And I looked, I was scrolling up to see, like, did Mira, like, you know, piss on his, you know, family's like grave or something, his grandmother's grave. And no, no. like you just woke up and then Lovo just like completely spurged at you for no reason. Crazy motherfucker. But yeah. Okay. Oh nice. yeah, I think I'm developing a gambling addiction. Hey. Gambling to what? You know, like those slot machines. I won my I friends bet. like eighty dollars, then fifty, and I felt lucky. Do you I mean, have an MGM? Yeah. In the Hard Rock. Oh, in the Hard Rock. So I think now we might go every week. Ooh. Every <laughs> you and your friend, just you're gonna be those types of girls where you go to you go into the city and start gambling with your girlfriends yeah and guy friends too oh wow that sounds pretty hot so like have how much have you won so you won 80 bucks was that yeah and then there was like 50 but then you know we kept going and then lose of course but like a hundred dollars or 120 something i don't know yeah that's pretty good so maybe if I, you know, go again, maybe I can win some more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty fun like, to go to a casino. And then there's food and like there's like this ice cream place that has like alcohol in it. And I kind of got tipsy off that and there was some like Korean like barbecue expensive, but it was good. I was kind of sad to eat at the Korean like grill place because um there was like some like meat that kind of reminded me of like what my ex-mom made for me at the time so (laughs) it was kind of weird because i was like eating it but like it's not like eating it instantly but more like i was taking my time with it and it felt so sad well like if you're gonna think of it like that you're never gonna be able to watch a k-drama again because you're just gonna think of chaz right (laughs) i don't watch so much k-drama so i think it's good I used to love... Well, I watched a couple with my aunt. My aunt... 
Oh yeah. She's like seven I also years old. Hmm? I also have a Philippine friend and I told her about you and she finds it funny like the things you say to me and I don't know what part of Philippines she's from but um I did speak of you today. Most people from the Philippines are from like Manila and stuff. I'm pretty like specific in the sense where I'm like my family is from the countryside from an island in the middle of the Philippines near Cebu. It's a very desolate. It's not desolate. It's like very far. It's like, um, it's like in the middle of like the ocean. It's like, you know, very, I guess you could say Polynesian. Very isolated. She's from isolated, yeah. Rosa Laguna. Do you know? That sounds pretty. Yeah, I, I know her. No, I'm joking. It sounds like, um, it sounds very Filipino. Rosa Laguna. Laguna, Laguna Castez. Castillo yeah. or some shit. <laughs> do you know tagalog no i don't i know like i watch some of the i know some of the swear words and shit um but i i think i forgot a lot of it i used to learn it when i was a kid but my mom gave up because i sucked but Aww. um yeah it was one of those things where i uh i i do watch some of the movies and stuff like liza Sobrano movies because those are really aesthetic and stuff but otherwise, um, I don't uh, I don't know it as well as I should. I do have a book where I've been trying to learn it and stuff, but it's like one of the slow. It must be hard, but it's I've noticed hard. there's some um, similar words in like Spanish and stuff. So it's funny how I can understand like reading some words online, kind of. It, it's kind of weird because like you know like Spain was there for like four hundred years, right? And so like when you think about it, like you'll have words that weren't invented in the original language. And so then you have the Spanish variation, like you have Spanish words because they weren't invented in the language that was spoken there before Spanish. And then the, 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 the words that weren't invented, you know, you know, yet after Spanish were used in English. So you have English, you have Tagalog, and then you have Spanish. And they're all like put together because like some words, like, you know, sometimes you don't have a, a Spanish version of a computer or something like that. And so you'll just say computer, you know? Yeah, and damn, everyone left the VC. What the heck? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, it was a pretty interesting meeting. I still moment. want to watch that Philippine, um, like drama you showed me. Was What's it was it like was it love? He's, in, he's or... into her. Yeah, he's into. Yeah, her. it looks pretty those good. Couple. It's a very cute drama it's like a, it's supposed to be like a k-drama but it's obviously not like it's its own thing but like it's it's got like a similar sort of vibe to it oh that's right everyone like left the vc even cheese to meet you just like left he didn't even explain himself motherfucker um <laughs> probably yeah, the worst pick sweet. not gonna lie Kara keyboard karate says hey how are you doing just like sitting in there in the night oh, she's the so sorry i'm kind of half asleep it's Four thirty-three. You seem like the type who would sleep late, though. Anyways, why? I don't know. She just has like a voice of someone who would sleep very late, reading books and stuff. A voice? Yes, you do. You seem like you can tell by. You'd be reading books in the night, you know, reading your Harry Potter and Hunger Games novels. Harry Potter. You know, I've never, well, I've seen some Harry Potter movie, but I've never read the book or like all movies. So I don't know what Harry Potter really is. It really sucks, honestly. I've always hated Harry Potter. I only watch the movies for Emma Watson, in my honest opinion. Oh. Because I thought Emma Watson was cute when I was like growing up. Um, It was, I mean, actually one of the things that is cool. Oh, like, yeah. Right? I was going to say, since you're into brunettes, like... I'm not brunette. I'm black hair. I mean, always growing up, I was always into like Latin girls and brunettes. I was never in. Well, I was into blondes at one point. And then for some reason, it's like when I stopped being into blondes, I also stopped being into Asians. Like it was at one point in time, like something snapped in me. With Asians, though, I was really into Asians until <laughs> I was walking around my house. And then my dad was having a conversation with one of his friends. And he was talking about how much he loved Asian women. And it was like, it was such a graphic conversation that he ruined Asians for me. <laughs> I completely, I don't remember specifically what he said, but I just remember after that conversation, just thinking it was no longer cool anymore. But um, I think for me, I was, I started getting really into brunettes after Ariana Grande, like became really big in 2012, 2013. 
because Ariana Grande, she she was like one of those sorts of people where at the time, like I guess now she, you know, maybe she looks like a basic bitch now, but back at the time, Ariana Grande seemed so like she was like like a Barbie doll, like she was the most beautiful person to ever exist. It seemed, um, you know, call me dramatic, but like it seemed like that was the case. Like she was just like like beauty standards at the time were not to the level at which she was at at in 2013 is what i mean like i feel like she raised the standard and a lot of girls try to look like her after that because like when you think about it the beauty standards for the 2000s was like girls who looked like britney spears were considered to be very attractive and now like comparing ariana grande to britney spears britney spears looks like trailer trash compared to ariana grande but anyways um the idea was i ariana grande became really popular and I remember there was this girl at my school, my high school, who was also Italian, and she looked just like Ariana Grande, and I fell in love with her. And after that, I was always into brunettes. But then, the thing was, this was the girl who I wanted to ask out to prom, and my friends had tricked me, more or less. I became friends with her best friend. Her best friend gave me her number. Not her number, but the, the girl who I liked's number, you know? And so... Um, Eventually, my best friends, they convinced me. They said, hey, get on Skype and call this girl. We'll tell you exactly what to say. And I was like, no, I don't want to do this. And then one of them said, fine, if you don't do this, I'll ask her out myself. And then you won't be able to take her to prom. Oh, you told me. Yeah, that's right. And so That anyway, was a scummy guy. Horrible thing to do. And so they were on Skype listening to the conversation I was trying to ask this girl out. And the worst thing about it was they said they would tell me what to say, but they didn't. Like right, right when I got on the call, it went silent. They got scared. Because they were like, holy fuck, he actually did it. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, when you call someone you barely know, ask them out to prom and they don't like they barely know who the fuck you are. And you also, in addition to that, ask them to follow you on Instagram. Um, you're obviously not necessarily going to go to prom with them, you know. And so after that, you know, after that whole situation, I was so pissed off by it. I only ever dated brunettes after that. Although, although honestly, like more so coincidentally, because it was like mostly like the type of girl who I was into just looked like that. And it was the, the idea was I was really spiteful. You know, if I didn't get that in high school, I'll get that always after high school forever. You know, that was the plan. In a sense, I was kind of right, you know, but yeah, I actually I've always liked girls who are like Latin or like brunette. That's always kind of been my type. I had a huge crush on Camila Cabello in high school. When they first came out, it was a Fifth Harmony when they first came out in 2012 on X Factor. The US version of X Factor had premiered and Fifth Harmony became a thing. And when I first saw Camila Cabello, you know, Camila Cabello, she's Cuban, I was like, holy fuck. Oh. She was I like see. The first, like, when I first saw her, I was like, she's going to be the one who's going to split off from the group and become the star. And I was right. <laughs> Ooh. Although our recent songs have been kind of shit. She's also gained some re weight recently, hasn't she? <laughs> kind of depressed after Shawn Mendes or something. Oh. Well, I have to go soon to report to my girlfriend and Guy friend, kind of gonna play League soon. Sure, that sounds all good. I'm gonna head out and I guess I'll play some Flight Simulator Final Fantasy. It was a good podcast. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, sounds it was good. good. We can have Maybe a... we can find some other topics to talk about as well. Yeah, well, if you have any recommendations, just send them to me or post them in the general and I'll keep note of them. Um, I mean, again... Drink? Alcohol? Hmm? What, what do you mean? <laughs> Talk drink. about our favorite drinks, alcohol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I was considering like today talking about like our exes and stuff, but I, I wondered if oh, that would no. be, yeah, that would be <laughs> kind of controversial. Um, hey, do you have any exes? Like, I feel like you're kind of young to have that many exes, anyways. <laughs> you don't have any. No. Oh, that's so cute. You, you're gonna try to be her first man? <laughs> Only if I go to Europe. I, I need a tour guide, right? <laughs> I need a tour guide. We could get like a private okay. cabin through the train, you know? 
just you know oh, just to save money i know bye <laughs> see you